Hello! <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to a Q&A! So over the last year my channel has grown a lot. <laughs> I thought it would be very fun if we did a little Q&A to get to know each other a little more and I thought why don't we do it while I do a project? So I thought I'd paint this door. So I am obsessed with this purple and this blue. I'm not gonna change the blue, don't panic. But when you open the door, it's green on the other side. And I did that because the rest of the hallway is green. But I've realized I have the door open a lot of the time. And so this door is actually in here a lot of the time. And I'd rather it was purple. Um, it could be blue. It was blue. Maybe you can see the edges. It was blue before. But I want it to be purple. <laughs> so I'm going to paint it purple. Actually, before I do that, I have this scraper. And I'm going to scrape the edges because I think they're stopping it from closing well. So I'm going to do this. And then we'll answer the first question. So the first question is from V Reads, and I love V Reads. Check out her Instagram. She's the happiest person I've ever seen. <laughs> she asks, what's your favorite thrifted find that I found for the house? And it's right there, baby. This little settee, this little couch, it's perfect. We all know it. While I'm sitting on this beautiful little vintage couch, and I will tell you the story of how I got it, Let's do a word from our sponsor. <laughs> this video is brought to us by Book of the Month. Book of the Month is an online book service for readers. How it works is super easy. Every month they have a selection of books that you can pick from. In March they have seven titles. You pick your favorite one, they ship it to you, you're happy, you found a new book, all is well in the world. <laughs> They have skip policy, which means that if for whatever reason you don't want to book that month, you can pause, you won't get charged, and you can just try again the next month. They currently only ship within the US, and it's a great way to find new, emerging, and popular authors all in one place. The books this month include The Cartographers by Peng Shepard, The Unsinkable Greta James by Jennifer E. Smith, Tell Me Everything by Erica Krauss, the Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley, Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma, The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James, and The Verifiers by Jane Peck. Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. If you want to check them out, use my link and my code Ariel down below to get a great deal on your first book. Hardcover for only $9.99? Not bad. But yeah, let me tell you about this couch. I wanted a cute little sitting couch for this room. And I started just typing in settee, vintage couch, lounge chair, love seat into Facebook Marketplace. And I found this boy. It was pretty, it was a bit of a drive to go and get him. But the reason that it was such a good deal and such a beautiful piece is because it was from a lady who owned a bed and breakfast and they were selling the bed and breakfast and so it was a pretty big beautiful inn and that had all this vintage furniture throughout it because it's been an inn for like a hundred years and they were selling it to go and live in a van like it was this older couple they were so cool and uh yeah she even threw in this cushion and i hate cushions but i feel like they go together <laughs> Okay, it's time to actually start painting and answering more of your questions. So what's the next question I have here? Average woman asks, what's your typical coffee shop order? I'm gonna be doing a blend of house related questions and just kind of fun, random personal questions. So I thought that would be fun. So let's start painting. Okay, what's my typical coffee shop order? So honestly, I didn't get co into coffee until very, very recently. I, maybe two years ago, I remember having a couple of <laughs> coffees when I was a teenager 
And it just made me so unbelievably hyper that I felt like I, it was just too much energy. <laughs> so I just avoided coffee. I also, because I had no tolerance, was I found it very bitter. But then I like really got to love the smell of it. Like, I mean, coffee just smells so unbelievably good. So I started um, wanting to have coffee and I would try it. And it wasn't until I discovered mochas that I really got into the coffee game because mochas are just hot chocolate <laughs> um, or chocolate milk. And I love chocolate milk. Chocolate, oh, don't get me started on chocolate milk. Um, so I started ordering mochas and that's been my go-to drink for a long time, but now they're too sweet. <laughs> What's happening? So when I was in New York, oh my God, I was in New York a couple days ago. I had the best coffee I've ever had in Brooklyn at this little cafe called Little Zelda. And it was a vanilla honey oat latte. Also sweet, but it had a lot of the coffee flavor there, not obstructed by uh, the very dominant flavor of chocolate. What, why am I, what am I talking about? I sound like I know what I'm talking about. I don't, I just loved this drink. And now for the last few days, I've been trying to recreate it at home and I'm getting close. It was so good. Okay, the next question is from Victoria. How do you justify buying books but not getting to read them all? I always feel guilty. I think you guys can see some of the books in the shot, can't you? Yeah, you totally can. So I don't feel guilty about buying books even a little bit, not even a smidgen, um, because of a few factors. Number one, I'm a book collector. So I, if you think about this in any other context, like stamp collecting, who would get mad at a stamp collector for not using the stamps? Like that's a, that's kind of crazy, <laughs> right? Like they're not buying them to use them. They're buying them to collect them. And while I think of my collection as an active collection, as something I do want to interact with, I don't, I have, I've never actually bought a book not thinking I would read it. I've never bought a book thinking, oh, this is just a beautiful book. I just want to have this. No, I always buy them thinking, I want to read this. Like I'm buying it because it sounds so good because I think it's going to be a fantastic read. But that being said, I am not thinking I'm going to read this right away. I'm thinking I want to read this eventually. This sounds like a good one to have. Somewhere online, I saw someone talking about how it's like a wine collection. So people who like buy beautiful wines or interesting wines and they have like a big collection of wine at their house, it's not because they want to drink all of it right away. It's because you're like curating a vibe so that when you're having a specific dinner and you're in a specific mood, you have the perfect wine to go with it. That's exactly how I feel about my books. I'm like constantly out there in the world looking for interesting books and I find them and I bring them home. And then one day I'm in the perfect mood to read something. I'm like, I really want a, a contemporary ghost novel. And I'm like, I have one of those. So I love that. But the other big reason is because Buying books is how you support authors. I love books. I love reading. I therefore love authors and writers. And if I want to support the industry, buying books is a way to do it. And I'm so happy that libraries exist because it means that not everyone has to buy books and to have access to them. But we live in the world that we live. And right now, buying books is absolutely the best way to support writers and publishing. Like if you want a writer to succeed, you buy their book. So I love spending my money on books because it's supporting my favorite industry. I think that's awesome. Okay. Ooh, Audrinator says, I love your style. <laughs> Do you thrift your clothes too? So I think the two is because I obviously thrift a lot of the furniture I have in my house. Um, I've never done any fashion content. <laughs> Because while I enjoy fashion and I enjoy clothing, I don't, um, I don't know, I've ne just never had it as kind of part of my personality or, or a big part of this, what I like to spend my time thinking about. Like I like, I do like cool clothes and I do enjoy cool things. Actually, in this shot, you can see my jackets. <laughs> Look at those jackets. Only a, <laughs> only a crazy person has this collection of jackets. This is my new parka. It's perfect. I have some old 80s ski jackets. This is a jacket I bought in, the yellow one, is a big yellow coat I bought in Tokyo. 
Um, oh, I just saw this. I have this really cool windbreaker in here that's got these like purple panels. Incredible, incredible. So to answer the actual question, um, do I thrift my clothes? Yes. So a couple years ago, I watched this documentary, classic beginning to an anecdote. <laughs> I watched this documentary called The True Cost and it was about the fast fashion industry. And up until that point, you know, I was maybe 20, 21, 22. I had never really heard about fast fashion. Um, I think maybe I'd heard the term before, but like didn't really know what it meant. Wow. <laughs> It scared me, it, it, but like it shook me in a really important way. And I was like, you know what? There's so many ways to get cool clothing that doesn't support fast fashion. So I just started, well, actually I was gonna say, I just started thrifting. It was not that casual. I didn't really know about thrifting cause it was just not a thing that I'd ever really done. I've grown up pretty rurally. So it wasn't really a thing, like buying clothes to me, I just hit the mic. Buying clothes to me growing up meant we're going to the mall to buy clothes where you can hit every store that you need and then we're coming back home because you need new clothes for school or something. So thrifting wasn't really a part of my life. And so when it came to like switching to ethical, sustainable fashion, I just started buying clothing. <clears throat> I just started buying clothing from expensive, <laughs> sustainable shops, which are expensive in that they were more expensive than I was used to, but I was happy to spend the money because I understood now what clothing should cost if everyone around the chain is getting paid fairly. But that was too expensive and I wanted more clothes than I was able to get with that system. So then I started thrifting. So now I would say probably 70% of my clothing is thrifted uh, from usually just Depop. Um, Sometimes Poshmark, but I find Poshmark shipping expensive to Canada. So a lot of depopping, which is also like a fun game. Um, and yeah, I also just honestly don't buy that much clothing lately. But you know what? I went to New York, as I mentioned, was unhappy with my wardrobe because I really haven't bought clothing in the last two years. Because why would I? I live in the middle of nowhere other than for videos, it doesn't matter what I wear. I wasn't going anywhere or traveling at all. So I just kind of, I guess, stopped with the fashion stuff. But I also really like cool sneakers and runners. I've got my beautiful Vans on today and I just bought these incredible, I'll, pu I'll put in a photo or a clip. I just when I was in New York, I bought these unbelievably beautiful sneakers that I'm pretty freaking thrilled about. They're like maybe the new, I felt silly buying runners in the middle of winter, but I don't care because I needed them and now I have them and I can wear them the second there's a fake spring day. <laughs> okay, next question. Oh, I love this question. Aria with Bella, did you go to university? If so, what did you study? So I, I like this question because it's to me such proof that there's so many new people watching my channel. I started making videos when I was 16. You guys, I was a baby. I'm 27. I've been on YouTube for over a decade. <laughs> ah! And so I was like going, I was finishing high school when I was on my channel. I then did my undergrad and my master's while all on YouTube. So to me, it's like, of course people know that I went to university, but I always find that fascinating as well. I always want to kind of know like, what are people's backgrounds? What did they do? How'd they get where they are? So I did an undergrad in English literature, of course, the books, um, at the university of Guelph. I didn't want to go to the university of Guelph, but that's the way the cards played out. <laughs> I ended up really enjoying my time at the university of Guelph. I actually did my first year of university online, fully online. And this was before people were forced to go online. <laughs> Actually, it's really interesting. because so I really wanted to go to Dalhousie in Nova Scotia because I, I really like Nova Scotia. So I thought it'd be cool to study here. But my dad had the opportunity to work remotely for a year. And so my family decided, let's go live in Honduras for a year because Honduras is where my mom is from. I am half Honduran, half Latina. And so We've visited Honduras a few times throughout my life up until that point when I was 18, but now we had an opportunity to actually live there for a whole year. And we were all like, we have to do this. We have to do this. So I was like, I don't want to 
delay starting university because I really just wanted to hop in. I was excited. So I needed to find a school that would let me do it online. So I applied to a bunch of different schools and only one of them would let me do my schooling fully online and it was Carleton University in Ottawa. So I never think about this, but technically my first year was through Carleton University so that I could live in Honduras. And then I came back and my dad got a job nearish Toronto Guelph area. So I ended up just transferring to Guelph and that's where I did my undergrad. Met some good peeps, had some fun times. <laughs> and then I finished there. I then took one year off a gap year, some may say, although I think a gap year usually implies that it's a year between high school and university, but for me, it felt like a gap year because I always knew I wanted to do a master's. Guys, I am dancing with death. I keep fearing that I'm gonna drop onto the floor. Clearly, I obviously should have put, I've dropped so many other times onto the floor. I should have put plastic down, but it's, I don't care. And then now I'm fearing I'm gonna touch my amazing jacket collection. So pray for me, pray for me. This is. Tension, tension, I'm building tension in the narrative. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, I always knew I wanted to do a master's. So for me, doing a year off between the undergrad and the master's did feel like a gap year. Um, I challenged myself that year to try and make YouTube a full-time job. Um, like not just YouTube, but like I've done a lot of online-ish things like editing video for people. I've, <laughs> I've edited some interesting videos over the years um, for different YouTube channels and different companies and stuff. And then I did my master's at University of Ottawa in English literature. Of course, my final project was a documentary on Instagram poetry, the phenomenon of Instagram poetry. It's on my YouTube channel <laughs> if you want to watch that. Um, and now here I am painting a door for a hundred thousand people. <laughs> okay, the next question, this is a very heavy can of paint and it is hurting my little hand. Solution-based company. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna grab this little stool. Oh. And I'm gonna put the paint down, okay. The next question from Kat is, what's the next house project video? I need spoilers. Well, I am happy to spoil for you. It is going to be my upstairs hallway. So obviously you will have seen when I painted this whole area green and did the stairway video, but next I am doing the upstairs and I'm so excited. Things were going good. <laughs> well, things were going fine. Um, but you know what? Last year I overworked myself. I was just really trying to make as much house content as possible. I was, I had a bunch of sponsorships lined up and I like, I wasn't used to getting that many, um, those many opportunities. And so I just kept saying yes to things. Completely overworked myself, was so tired over Christmas and New Year's that I basically took, um, January and February off from house renovations. I really have done nothing. I have painted a little bit, but barely. But now it's March. I'm so excited to get back into it. I feel like I took the break I needed from the house stuff. And I mean, I don't think I saved one of these questions, but I did have people asking like, like, do you get tired of doing the house stuff? Do you take breaks from it or what? And like, yeah, I did. I had to because I was so exhausted. It's funny too, because it's, it's so many different types of exhaustion. It's exhaustion from the actual physical labor of doing the projects, but then it's also exhaustion of, of editing and filming these giant videos, exhaustion of having to wake up every single day and make giant decisions about what do I paint this? What decision do I make for this? Like usually I think people think about it for months and they're like, Hmm, what should I paint this room? Hmm. Whereas everything gets so condensed for me because I'm trying to make them into these videos. But on the other hand, I got a lot done. <laughs> so, you know, pros and cons, but anyway, what the hell was the question? Oh yeah, what's the next house project? Upstairs, the hallway. I'm so excited we have a guardrail, okay? We didn't have a handrail up there for a while, which was super dangerous, but you know, we had some precautions in place. 
but now we have a proper proper handrail and I'll insert a little sneak peek photo or video here so unbelievably excited to finish that space and yeah so that should be hopefully coming to you soon I'm excited too because like it's a transitionary space you walk through it um to get anywhere like if the second you leave your bedroom you walk through that space so I like the idea of it being beautiful okay let's see what's next oh shoot I should not have sat down the next question is from Sej Pot do you have any tattoos if you'd get one what would it be so I have the tiniest little tattoo ever <laughs> I love it there it is so I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Which I didn't even notice purple getting on my hand. Nope. Nope, that's spam. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a collagen production problem. And uh, your ears, your cartilage, are largely collagen. <laughs> so I've tried to get helix piercings before because I think they look so cool. Oh, I wish I could get helix piercings. Every single time, I think I've tried three or four times, every time they never heal. It'll be like a year and it never heals. So I've, I haven't been able to keep them. So I decided to get this little tattoo that's sort of fake jewelry and I love it. And you know, I've always think about other tattoos that I would get. I have a list of them. Like I would love to get two plus two equals four here as an homage to uh, 1984. Maybe two plus two does not equal five. Um, across here, I think that would look really cool. I love the idea of the Count Olaf eye on my ankle. I think that would look incredible. Um, and there's a couple of other ones that I think would be really neat. But will I actually get them? I don't know. This one really satisfied my tattoo urge. I love this one. Super hideable, almost nobody notices it. But I know it's there and I really like it. And I bought, I got it when I was in Athens. So it was like a fun little adventure tattoo. There you go. This next question, do you have any ideas for the house that you'll never be able to implement, says Kat Katerina. So this is an interesting question because I've never thought about this before. I've never thought about this angle before. I think the thing that I've started to give up on with this house <laughs> is the idea of it being nicely climate controlled. So I'm not gonna give up full hope yet. There's still a lot of insulation stuff that I can attempt. There's like new heating systems that I can attempt, but every plant in this house dies. Like it's, I've got one cactus that's, or one succulent that's doing pretty good. And then my mom has all of her plants on one table with like multiple heat lamps on them and a little humidifier because that's the only way that a house can th that a plant can thrive in this house, which is really devastating because I love plants, but it's just too drafty. It's too cold. Like it gets really, this house gets really cold at night and really warm in other periods and it stays kind of either too humid or not humid enough. <laughs> So I'm gonna keep working on it. It's, but th that's the kind of project that's gonna be like a years, multiple years long project trying to like secure the house insulation wise. So <clears throat> I think this video has probably been long enough, but I have one question more that I wanna answer. Um, the, I mainly finished painting the door. It has to dry and then I can do the second coat. Um, but I think we can agree that this is very nice because now when this door is open, it feels like it goes with the rest of the room. I am absolutely though seeing I missed that. Okay, so the final question I wanna answer is one I got a lot. And this is from Sophie. How are the ducks doing? I understand. I understand the impulse to wanna to know about the ducks. So I will take you out to the ducks. <laughs> okay, first a trip into the very uncomfortable cramped uh, pantry in order to get some bird seed. <laughs> it is definitely a mistake to be trying to film this on my nice camera. Oh, here we go. Let's see if I can set this up. All right. Hola! Okay, there you go. 
Can you see them? <laughs> Hard not to, considering how many of them there are. Uh, I want to get the ones in the back. Everyone should be fed. Wow, it's such a pretty day. Hi, guys. So if you watched my channel at all last year, you would have seen, I did a couple videos outside where I was talking about the dreams I have for what I want to do out in my, on my property, on my land. Um, I haven't really gotten to much of that stuff because last year I just really was focusing on the inside. Hard to do it all. <laughs> but I think this year I am really going to try and do some fun projects out here. I'm really excited because um, I have some interesting plans. But in those videos, you would have seen that I have a swamp. M much of my land is swamp because there's a beaver dam blocking the river up near the top of my land. It's a ridiculous situation I found myself in. But all of that to say, these ducks, they live in my swamp sometimes. They actually live in a lake kind of yonder, um, but they visit every day and they fly away at night to go to their own house. <laughs> But they're really funny. They're super friendly. Um, I have pet some of them. They're really cool. I really like them. This is my duck flock. Yeah, I have a duck flock. <laughs> what, a <laughs> what a way to end this video. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. And thank you so much to my patrons. Sorry, I'm watching a duck chase another duck. Uh, thank you so much to my patrons for sponsoring my content. I'm really excited to be getting back into gear that I took a break. I feel way more energized to get back into house stuff. So I think we'll have some fun over the next few months. All right, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.